perfect timing just after yeah. we talked to Caden. So, okay, awesome. Yeah, thought, thoughts about the way you're, uh, okay. you guys are doing. Yeah, guys are doing well, progressing. Uh, you know, the first very, very first meeting I had with the guys, give them what the objectives were, and that's to have everyone just play at their very best, right? Everybody's on different skill level. Everybody has different strengths. So if everybody can bring their their, their most elite self to the to the, to the to the team, then that's when it becomes, you know, really fun. And so uh, helping each uh, individual person just become their best at what they do and the techniques that we're teaching them, um, whatever development they have, whatever phase, whatever entry that they have uh, has always been the goal. And, and so as you can do that, I can translate onto the field as a team. Talk about, no, pretty chippy day to day out there, right? You know? Obviously, you don't want guys throwing punches per se, but you like the fact that they're getting after one Yeah, I like the aggressiveness. Uh, I don't, I don't uh, obviously like you know the the punches, and we, we kind of took care a little bit about that. And that's really just uh, uh, you know developing a toughness. You know, as we as we define toughness in our room, really our original definition of toughness is be able to perform whatever the weather is, whatever the circumstances. Now, their circumstances could be the weather, it could be, uh, you know, uh, three overtimes, whatever it is, it could be someone on your back, but being able to, to just perform, and that takes away from your performance, right? And so we've really just got to say, okay, you know what, let's let the let's let the weather do what they got to do. I still got to do my job and be my best. When players engage in that, is there like a discipline, or, or not, it's just like something where they go off the side of, back in the day at Utah, there used to be the pit or whatever, like, is there something like that for the players when they do that? There's, there's not a dif discipline, but there's a, you see that there's a deficiency that needs to be either one, re-educated and taught and supported in a way that they can be tough when that situation comes around again. So you've got to, as a coach, you don't, you don't, I mean, you can call it punishment, but what you got to do is you got to say, okay, what well, had them go off the deep end to be able to get into that? And then how do we strengthen whatever that weakness or that trait is, right? And so, you know, in situations like that, you can, I mean, you know, tempers fly in there. So then what do you do? Hey, how can we... How can we cool our temper when it gets hot? Because that's not going to be the first time it happens, right? And, and the worst thing that you want to happen is be able to have a flag or an injured player. So you've got to look at that behavior, stem and see what principle they didn't really understand, and, and then you coach it as good as you can so that when that does arise again, right, they're, they're able to temp – that becomes a strength for them. How many D tackles right now do you feel confident could contribute in games? Six. Six guys right now? Yep. Do you think all would play in a game potentially? Yep. Yes. Who, who do you look at as the leaders? Because you got newcomers, you got veterans. Who you, who's kind of leading leading the unit? Uh, when I look, when I when I think about leading, um, you know, necessarily we think about leading as leading as a group. The person that can lead themselves the best is the leader, right? And because they are able to lead themselves by the way they they do, the way they handle themselves when situations come like that, when they're able to walk away, that's a true leader. Leaders influence rather than dictate where everybody goes. And so who has the strongest influence, you know? And there's tons of them on the team. There's tons on uh, different positions. But when I look at a leader, I look at someone who's like, who's able to take care of their farm, and their farm looks so good that everybody wants to take care of their own farm themselves. Would you feel comfortable naming your top six, or do you want to keep it as a group? I got six, and they got to know who they are. Everybody's at different levels in different seasons, right? Watermelons don't grow in December, right? And so here comes the December harvest, right? And so each harvest is different. Everybody at different phases, and it's hard to uh, it's it's hard to name names because sometimes the the public doesn't understand the concept by which we're we're judging, we're measuring, making that measurements. And so uh, everybody in their own way is a leader in themselves. How much is Man, just just understanding it, um, you know, us playing in it, us being able to coach in it, uh, helps us become better coaches. At not not because we know it, but because we can refine our, our ability to teach, right? Refine our curriculum, refine the way we we can identify things and and how we practice it and and the drills that we put into place. So it makes us uh, better teachers. And whether you've been in it or not, just being in that room um, and the way Coach Hill teaches us, we're able to become better teachers. Remember, better teachers bleed down to better players right so it's not about it's a better scheme it's really what the players do and so uh kind of the midpoint of that is the coaches and having us being better teachers so jay does a great job and you got great coaches in there man you know um i feel uh you know kind of bottom tier you know compared to the coaches in there there's i mean we got enna we got k-pop i mean you got uh, g in there and you got jay i mean those are all great guys to learn from man and so and uh mostly because they're great teachers right they understand the content they understand the scheme but man just being able to deliver it, and you can see that proof on the field. Since he is new, but he has a lot of reps behind him, Jackson Cravens, what kind of game does he bring? 
Yeah, I mean, Jackson Craven is a strong player, right? Really a strong player, really a natural player, as you can see now. I remember I had him as a freshman when I was at Utah, so I coached him before. So our verbiage kind of like he understands the verbiage and he kind of understands the expectations. Uh, but it's not no uh, more so understanding the expectations rather than being the expectations, which is what he's been. He's been able to say, okay, this is the level we need to play at. This is the stoutness we need to be at. This is the aggressiveness in certain situations that we need to be at. And so being the being one of the standard of the many standards that are on this defense is what he contributes. Speaking of uh, your background, what did you make of the three new additions to the conference that will be joining the Big 12? Hey, that's all. We're always excited for you know what the future holds for us, uh, but we're very focused on this year, right? It's, it's an opportunity for us to, to go out this year, our first year in the Big 12, and to go out there and be, you know bring the best to the field. Uh, we know that we've got a great fan base with Cougar Nation. I mean, everybody, we've got Cougar Nation, we've got alumni, we've got the uh, uh, fans all over the world, so we're really focused at being able to bring the best to the table for, for our entrance into the Big 12 this year. What is your opinion Last of question. the Big 12 in terms of what you see? Everybody kind of looks at it from, from different angles, but when you look at the Big 12 or think of the Big 12 and what you guys will be facing this year, what comes to mind for you? Man, when, when you... I haven't really thought about it that much. I've been just really focused on trying to get ourselves to stop the run and disrupt the pass. You know, I don't really, I, I don't really uh, imagine too much. Uh, out there, it takes a little bit of focus and attention away from what's most important, and that's what's in front of us. And, and helping Jackson, and helping Nisa, helping all all the guys in my room be able to come better. I haven't really had too much time to really think out there. Well, and, and, I, and I probably I mean more on the field in terms of the types of schemes you'll face and getting ready for that. Like what type of what type of games do you expect in this conference? Oh, a competitive game. You know, it's a great conference. Right, it's it's a great conference, and we we hope to add to that conference, um, and for the reputation that that conference has had, we 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 we, we hope to be a, a valuable member and contribute not only on the field, but by our demeanor and by our sportsmanship, by the way we carry the the, the Big Twelve brand in terms of building these you know great characters of athletes. Um, so it's more than you know the field is just one spectrum, and it's something that everybody uh, that everybody expects. But we hope that every athlete that comes through the Big Twelve, whether it be through our program or others, leave a better person and can contribute to society. Great. Thank you, Coach. Okay. Thank you. Yep. Thank you.